Hi. On February 17th, the Ministry of Power notified its green hydrogen slash green ammonia policy, which is aimed at promoting green hydrogen and green ammonia industry in the country. Now, in this video podcast, we will take a look at what this policy, what this announcement is all about. What does it seek to do? To what extent is it likely to be successful? What are the pitfalls, if any? And essentially, what are the next steps in this direction that the government is likely to take based on its previous announcements? And as part of the next steps, we will look at what the government is likely to do from the demand side and from the supply side. And under the demand side, we will, since the policy speaks of green ammonia, each time it also speaks of it, it speaks of green hydrogen because it is always consistently everywhere in the policy short policy document. It is spoken of green hydrogen, green ammonia in the same breath. We will also take a close look at what this green ammonia is all about and why has it been given so much importance. Now, let's take a look at the policy. Uh, uh, the announcements are there in public domain. There is not much to declutter in that. Uh, the, uh, what the government aims to do here is to make uh, availability of uh, renewable energy, the green electricity, that is electricity from renewable sources like solar, essential solar, solar, wind and so on, for the manufacture of green hydrogen. Now, only if hydrogen is produced using electricity from renewable sources can it be called green hydrogen but first of all let us understand take a you know step back a little and understand what is this coloring of hydrogen after all hydrogen is a colorless gas what is green hydrogen some people speak of blue hydrogen there is something called green gray hydrogen what's all this about very let's very quickly take a look at this now hydrogen is produced typically uh, conventionally by a, a method called steam methane reforming which uses natural gas uh, and uh, in the process, it the process emits a lot of carbon dioxide. So it is carbonaceous, let's say. It is greenhouse gas emitting process and therefore it is called grey hydrogen. Now blue hydrogen is the hydrogen that is produced by a process that also emits greenhouse gases, primarily carbon dioxide. But in this case, the carbon dioxide is captured, sequestered, separated and stored, put away somewhere. It does. It's not let into the atmosphere. Any process that produces hydrogen by sequestering the carbon dioxide emitted is called, you know, the hydrogen that is produced by this process is called blue hydrogen. And if hydrogen is produced through any process that does not involve emission of any greenhouse gas, does not involve emission of carbon dioxide, it is called green hydrogen. Now carbon dioxide, which is the biggest greenhouse gas, uh, is a dreaded enemy of the mankind today. And therefore, the world is keen on avoiding any emission of carbon dioxide uh, as much as possible. And therefore, the world is giving emphasis to green hydrogen. And that is the context broadly behind which this policy announcement has also come. Now, to produce green hydrogen, therefore, you need electricity from renewable energy. Green hydrogen is typically produced. There are a few, quite a few ways of producing green hydrogen. But the most predominant technology available today uh, the, the, the the technology that is most used today is uh, electrolysis of water, which uses electricity to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. And for this purpose, you need electricity. And it doesn't help anybody if, they, if that electricity comes by burning coal somewhere. So you need renewable energy for electrolysis. So this policy tries to or seeks to make this renewable energy that is meant for electrolysis process available easier and cheaper. Easier because the government has promised, you know, all these details are there. They're just, I mean, there in the public domain, there's nothing much to um, elus explain or declutter here. Basically, what the government wants to do is to, it, it, it promises quick clearances for renewable energy projects, the renewable energy access to uh, these green hydrogen units and so on. And then, it is uh, it's also spoken of waiving what are called interstate transmission charges that is if you have a green hydrogen unit in one state and the green energy that is used for that is coming from some other state uh, the interstate transmission charges that are typically levied in such cases will be waived 
for a period of 25 years and also if a green hydrogen producer has his own captive renewable energy plant like a solar plant that energy if there is any sur a surplus energy that uh, that a renewable energy unit produces it can be banked with the local utility for a period of 30 days so these are certain enabling measures basically after all the power ministry can do whatever lies within its remit within its mandate so basically what it has done is to is to make availability of green energy renewable energy cheaper and easier to the you know for companies that seek to produce green hydrogen now the question here is to what extent is this, this is what the policy seeks to do but will it be successful is it likely to be successful and if so to what extent and uh, what are uh, the likely stumbling blocks here primarily we have to understand that electricity is a current subject you know states have their own say here uh, the biggest block here could be the states not playing ball here the center has done whatever it wants what whatever it can do but states will also have to agree to these waivers now it is not very clear to experts even experts who are been following this very closely it's not very clear as to what extent do these discoms the state owned electricity distribution companies to what what say do they have in these matters that's not quite clear uh, will you know is this mandatory do they have to necessarily accept these waivers it's not clear and even if they do states have their own levies like cross subsidy charges now those things are going to make green hydrogen costlier so it's up to the states also to come up with certain policy measures in sync with what the center has done now unless they do this policy may not be very successful and again uh, waiving of interstate charges comes into play only when the electricity supply comes from another state now if the hydrogen unit is is in one state and the renewable energy that is used for that unit also comes from the same state there is no play there is no role for interstate charges at all in these cases it is uh, uh, other the state government levied charges such as cross subsidy charges that that matter here now what the states will do here is not very clear but one assumes that a smart state government will also reduce or abolish the charges that it is currently levying so that in its own state there is a very robust green hydrogen industry created so basically the broad framework has been set by the power minister power ministry and it is now up to the state government to also come up with some complementary measures and when if this happens at, at least one part of the green hydrogen campaign is kind of taken care of now what are the next steps that the government should do well we have, as we have seen let us assume this policy is completely successful so cheap and e cheap renewable energy is easily available for green hydrogen manufacturers let us assume that it's a given so what are the next steps that the government should do now the government going by its own statements in the past are likely to do a few things for the supply side it is likely to bring in or is rather promised to extend the production linked incentive scheme the pli scheme which which gives certain financial incentives for manufacture and sales of a, of a product so that pli scheme is very likely to be extended to green hydrogen manufacture also that is you know is being talked about but it, it should be formally notified one expects that will happen that is on the supply side so that you know it makes supply of or production of green hydrogen uh, of economically viable now on the demand side again the government has promised a few things one is that it has promised to bring in what is called the green hydrogen purchase obligation what it means is there are industries industries like refineries and fertilizer that use uh, hydrogen uh, even today in their processes and the they these industries are likely to be told or mandated that a little part of their consumption certain prescribed portion of their consumption of hydrogen should come from should be green hydrogen 
So that will create a demand for green hydrogen, even if it is a little costlier than conventional hydrogen. That is one measure. The second measure that the government again has promised to bring in is to blend hydrogen with natural gas when it is supplied to, say, vehicles in places like Delhi and other parts of North India, where natural gas is supplied to vehicles, automotive sector, and maybe some other industries also. Some hydrogen will be mixed with the natural gas that is supplied. So that again will create some demand for hydrogen. And the third one in this demand creation is green ammonia and here again as i said earlier everywhere the policy document that short policy document spoke of green hydrogen it also spoke of green ammonia it was always green hydrogen slash green ammonia now what is this green ammonia why is it being such importance that is something that we will now examine a little closer now, what is this green ammonia that the government seems to think so highly of? What is ammonia in the first place? Uh, ammonia is a chemical compound that is sort of a basic building block for many other chemicals, mainly fertilizers, nitrogenous fertilizers. India needs a lot of fertilizers. As we all know, we are an agriculture country, but we don't have any ammonia production in the country. We import ammonia for, for about about. 15 million tons or so, it is expected to go to 20, 10, 25 million tons as the agricultural production in the country goes up. Oh, ammonia is a combination of nitrogen and hydrogen. Typically, the hydrogen for this has come from natural gas. India does not have enough of natural gas. In fact, it has very little natural gas. More than half of the natural gas consumed in this country is imported. So, India has not been producing its own natural gas because it is natural gas after all is a combination of carbon and hydrogen and that hydrogen is taken out of the combination and made to join with nitrogen to form ammonia. Since we don't have in this country enough natural gas, we have been forced to import ammonia. But now, here is the thing, the, now the opportunity is we are going to be producing hydrogen ourselves that too is going to be green hydrogen now for the first time we have therefore an opportunity to produce our own ammonia india can now produce its own ammonia and reduce its dependence upon imports and what more this ammonia is going to be green ammonia because the hydrogen for making this ammonia itself is going to be green hydrogen it's going to come it's coming from renewable energy sources therefore for the first time ever india has an opportunity to become self reliant or atmanirbhar in the manufacture of ammonia and guess what here is an opportunity for india to even export ammonia and it is with this thing in mind obviously that the ministry of power policy document also speaks of in the very end, in the bottom, there is one little paragraph that speaks of allowing green hydrogen manufacturers to set up bunkers at ports. What it means is, you know, again, I must say that ammonia is also a good fuel. It can run marine engines. It can run other kinds of engines also. So if you have green ammonia and if you have it in ports and when foreign ships call or, you, or ships call to the ports, call on the ports, you can supply ammonia as fuel to run those ships and you can also export ammonia, green ammonia to other countries. This means for the first time ever, India not only has the opportunity to manufacture its own ammonia, it also has the opportunity to become an energy supplier to the world. All along we have been energy dependent, you know, import dependent, excepting for coal, even coal we import a lot. Otherwise, all kinds of energy, India has been an importer. Here is an opportunity for India to make use of the green hydrogen, to produce green ammonia and also use it domestically and export it. Now, the thing to note here is, the a green ammonia industry, if it develops alongside green hydrogen industry, it creates a demand function. It creates a ready market for the green hydrogen. That is why I said this green ammonia is one of the moves of the government to create demand for the green hydrogen. The thing is, 
it is a lot easier to store ammonia to transport ammonia than it is to do hydrogen Hi handling hydrogen is very tough handling ammonia is also tough but not that tough it's a lot easier to handle ammonia that is why this policy speaks of green ammonia in the same breath as green hydrogen consistently throughout now what is now awaited is the actual mission document for the national hydrogen national green hydrogen mission to come from the ministry of new and renewable energy fortunately minister for power is also the minister for new and renewable energy the same person mr r k singh so one expects that the mission document for uh, what has what was announced uh, on february 17th was not exactly the mission document but an, an, an enabling framework a part of the framework for the hydrogen mission but what is keenly awaited is the mission document for green hydrogen and when that happens one can expect things to move on very fast thank you